These are mushrooms from the grocery store, but they look very similar to magic mushrooms, which contain psilocybin, a psychedelic. Possessing real magic mushrooms for recreational use is illegal in Ontario. Now, it's possible to obtain medical psilocybin legally for mental health purposes, but that's extremely difficult to do in the Canadian medical system. But that might soon change. The federal government is currently funding three clinical trials of psilocybin, and it's starting to grant access for universities to study it on their own. And outside of those trials, a federal court challenge is arguing that the lack of access to medical psilocybin goes against the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's all leading to a major change in how doctors view psilocybin in Canada. In a few years, patients may be able to get psilocybin prescribed to them, almost like any other drug. But first, let's talk about the history of psilocybin. Psilocybin was first discovered by Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman and his team in 1958. From 1958 to 1971, 259 scientific papers were published on psilocybin. In 1971, at the United Nations Convention on Psychotropic Substances, psilocybin was listed as a Schedule I drug, claiming that psilocybin had very little or no therapeutic value. In Canada, psilocybin was added to the Food and Drugs Act in 1974, making it an illegal substance. This all led to a dark age in psilocybin research, as there was a huge stigma against it. But fast forward to the early 2000s, and after a shifting cultural attitude towards psychedelics, brought mainly from MAPS, the number of psilocybin-focused research papers began to grow dramatically. By 2020, more than 200 research papers were being published per year. Also that year, Health Canada amended Section 56 of the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, granting legal access to psilocybin for therapeutic purposes. In 2022, Health Canada amended the Special Access Program, allowing doctors to request psilocybin for patients that were suffering from serious or life-threatening conditions. To really understand the gravity of these conditions, let's meet one of these patients. This is Steve Allgood. He was one of the first patients in Canada to receive medical access to psilocybin through Section 56. I'd been feeling off and weird for several months, and then uh, went for a CAT scan, and two days before my wedding, I was told that I was terminal and that there's no treatment for the type of brain tumor that I had. Steve fell into a deep depression. A year after his diagnosis, his first child was born, but he didn't feel like he could be an engaged parent. His brother-in-law convinced him to try psilocybin-assisted therapy, and that therapy completely changed his mindset. Now, the mushrooms didn't cure Steve's cancer, but he does credit them with helping him get over his depression and giving him the strength to be an active father to his children. I did my first legal mushroom uh, psychotherapy trip in February of 2022. It's been five years since I was diagnosed. I don't think I'm going to die anytime soon now. And because of the, the, the mushrooms and all, and all this work, it's really given, given me my life back 100%. People who want to follow in Steve's footsteps might get that opportunity soon. Right now, if a patient wants to get access to psilocybin, First, they need to get a prescription by their doctor, who then needs to get an exemption through Canada's Special Access Program. Once the application is in, Health Canada is mandated to respond within two business days. But the majority of patients don't qualify for inclusion in the Special Access Program because they don't meet the very stringent criteria. So many patients end up going underground, getting their psilocybin illegally and unsupervised. Theracil is a Canadian nonprofit that is working to legalize therapeutic psilocybin. It's bringing a lawsuit against the federal government on behalf of several Canadian medical patients who were denied access to psilocybin treatment. It's arguing that the current framework violates its clients' right to life, liberty, and security because they are not being given viable access to these medical treatments under the current rules. If Theracil's lawsuit is successful, the Canadian government will have to enact a new framework that removes these roadblocks. But before we continue, we have to ask, why are some physicians arguing that psilocybin is such an effective mental health aid? For that, I spoke with Dr. Neil Chatta, a family doctor and one of the physicians with the Canadian Centre for Psychedelic Healing. Psilocybin gets broken down into psilocin and that uh, specific substance acts on serotonin receptors primarily in the brain. And what that does is it allows you to downregulate some of your default patterns of thinking. So another pathway um, that uh, psilocybin through psilocin acts on um, actually increases the brain's ability to do neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. And both of these functions are really important 
in creating new chemical pathways and new thought processes in the brain. We um, commonly see patients with depression be stuck in negative default patterns of thinking and ruminating. What psilocybin does is it allows you to break those patterns and create new positive patterns. We've seen over and over again in supervised therapeutic settings, psilocybin and some other psychedelic medications are very safe and extremely effective at treating treatment resistant mental health disorders. Right now, Neil's opinion isn't shared by the Canadian government. The government's position is that psilocybin products have not undergone the rigorous scientific review process required to be authorized for sale in Canada. But earlier this year, Health Canada announced it was investing just under $3 million into three clinical trials involving psilocybin. And in October, Loyalist College was granted a controlled drugs and substances license from Health Canada for psilocybin research. To understand the importance of prompt medical legalization, I spoke to John Gilhurst from Theracil. As of August 2023, there were 128 people in Canada with medical access to psilocybin. We have over 1,300 patients on a waiting list trying to access psychedelics. Those are paltry numbers. Imagine being a patient, you have a two-year prognosis, you get denied access to use psychedelics through an exemption scheme, you join a clinical trial, and then you're part of a control group. You don't even get to try the medicine. Just imagine what a patient would be going through at that point. Now let's talk about the next few years and where psilocybin is going. Daracil's lawsuit is still in the discovery phase and its lawyers say that the case is still more than two years away from a judgment. But if their charter challenge is successful, Section 56 and the Special Access Program will have to change and psilocybin will become more medically accessible for Canadian patients. As for the clinical trials funded by the Canadian government, their outcomes are still years away as well. But Canada isn't the only country launching trials into psilocybin. 2022 saw more research papers published globally about psilocybin than any year in history. Momentum appears to be building towards greater scientific acceptance of psilocybin. The question now is if the same is going to happen with public policy.